Namaste and welcome to Youth TV show produced by Today's Youth Asia. Youth TV show is a youth-led and youth-produced weekly television show. It is an outcome of nine years of hard work and dedication of our youths. In today's episode, we have with us Mr. Brendan Doherty and we are discussing on the subject Youth Involvement in Law. Mr. Brendan Doherty is a Special Assistant to the Under Secretary of the State on Democracy and Global Affairs at the U.S. State Department. He has also served as the Chief of the Party of the Public International Law and Policy Group. Um, so I, uh, I'm American. I, I grew up in uh, the Northeast United States. Uh, in a very small town, actually. It only had about 7,000 people in it. So in many ways, it's probably like some of the very small villages here in Nepal where, uh, where you, you grow up in a, in a situation where it's very hard to conceive of going to another country, um, of doing things like what I'm doing now. Uh, many of my friends, who I'm still extremely close with from childhood, uh, they still live in, in that small town. And so it's always so fascinating to go back and after you know, going to Nepal, after living here, after spending time in Africa, and to go back and to see them again, and, and to interact and to share some of the experiences. So I think, uh, even though obviously you know, it's, our countries are different, there are of course incredible similarities too in, in terms of the family and in terms of places that we can grow up in. Um, after, after I grew up there, I, I went to university, um, at a public university, and studied philosophy. Uh, I finished and I had no idea what I wanted to do after that. Uh, I in fact thought I wanted to, to manage hotels and restaurants. Um, I, I love to entertain, I love to have my friends over and doing something like ho hospitality seemed to me like the, 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 the right uh, profession to go into. Um, but I spent the next couple years after my bachelor's degree doing so many different things. I traveled across the United States, I lived in California, um, I was a scuba dive instructor for about a year in, uh, in Latin America and eventually settled in, in San Diego where I worked in an adolescent group home with severely uh, emotionally and mentally frustrated youth actually. So ages 13 to 18 years old. They had all been incredibly abused verbally and, and physically by their families, by people who claimed to be their friends um, and because of it they had had quite a few challenges growing up and they were placed by the California government in a home to be rehabilitated. And so I spent about a year in that, in that group home working with them, um, seeing the challenges they faced and trying to better understand uh, where they had come from and, and see if I couldn't provide some level of trust and empathy and, and understanding and then encouragement for them to, to, um, to aspire to be something different. Um, Ultimately, though, and I think this was one of the most important experiences, actually, of, of going there, was that I learned that uh, being in an environment like that is actually not my strength. Um, I found it very, very emotionally exhausting, and I found that uh, many of these youth came from um, very, very different backgrounds than I came from. And it became very difficult, actually, to, to connect with many of them in, in some ways. And, and I realized that even though inside of myself I wanted to work with populations of people, with individuals who had experienced uh, great hardship, that in fact it was not the type of people that perhaps I could have the greatest impact with. Um, and so what I did at that point was I started to think about what else I might want to do. And that was when I began talking to many of my mentors. And I encourage all of you, as I had said before, that it's so incredibly important to find mentors in your life to to find individuals who you can identify with, who you respect, um, and, and even sometimes people who are doing things that you aspire to do. Um, because they can give you the advice and the insights that can uh, prevent you from ma making some of the same mistakes they made, but also just to kind of help you think about what are your passions and how maybe to apply them. And when I did that, I found that Perhaps one of the areas that might help me fulfill one of my passions and work with populations that are disadvantaged is to follow law. And for some of you, it may be social work, it may be urban development or rural development. Um, it, it may be any number of fields, but for me, I realized that perhaps law would be a vehicle that would allow me to provide 
the type of, um, of advocacy and support for minorities and marginalized populations and historically disadvantaged populations uh, that I felt passionate about. So I encourage all of you to identify, as I said before, what are your passions, uh, what are your interests, and then work back from that. Say, how do I get there then? What would help me to arrive at a place where, where I'm happy with you know, waking up in the morning and going to work? And, and I, I know that there's probably pressure, as there was on me, to find uh, work and, and a job that pays bills and that can provide for family, because that's absolutely important. But at the same time, you can balance that. And you can do something where you're, you're engaged and you're inspired and you're active, but you're also able to, to earn a living and a profession because it's always that incredible balance. So law, for me, became that vehicle, became that path to, to a profession. So I, I finished law school, and during law school, I, I worked in Africa, actually, at a, uh, for the United Nations um, in what's called the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. Um, in 1994, Rwanda had a very horrific genocide, which I'm sure many of you know about. And they, the international community came together and set up a court to try those most responsible for the genocide and also for other crimes. So I went and worked with there, and I worked directly with many of the victims of the Rwandan genocide who had come to the court to testify. And if you think of um, maybe, for many of you who maybe grew up outside of Kathmandu, what it was like for the first time you came to Kathmandu from a small town. For me, it was the equivalent of growing up in my small town of 7,000 people and going to my capital, Boston, for the very first time. For many of these people, these victims who were coming to testify at the court, not only were they leaving their village of maybe 600 people, but they were getting on an airplane for the first time. They were flying for three hours from Rwanda all the way to Tanzania, getting in a big vehicle with the UN and then coming before the court and testifying about how their family had been killed, about how their brothers and their sisters um, had been abused. And the entire experience was, on the one hand, extremely tragic and traumatizing for them, but on the other, it became an inspiration, actually, for their village to stand up against the injustices and to testify and be willing to come all this way to, to tell her story or his story. And so, for me, I, I often use that as an inspiration um, in my work at the State Department uh, and in my work here in Nepal where, where I try to imagine what it must have been like for someone who had experienced such incredible hardship and tragedy and to leave that small, comfortable environment of, of family, of the support network there and travel all the way to a foreign country to tell their story in hopes that there might be some justice. And I use that as an inspiration for me um, when I'm here in Nepal, when I'm thousands of kilometers from my family and my home and things that I know very well, I often think back on that and use that as a way of saying, you know what, those people are so incredibly strong, more strong than I am. And, you know, I, I, I want to draw on that and, and try to be like them and, and, and to also help others inspire themselves to challenge themselves. So that's just a very little bit about my background. Um, and I, I'm really looking forward to actually having an interaction. Uh, my style is very much one of, of discussion, uh, and, and there should be nothing that you can't ask me, in fact. Um, I think if, if one of you has a question, it's probably likely that three or four of you have the same question. Um, so in that sense, you should feel absolutely comfortable to ask it. It can be personal, it can be professional, it can be about my work here, about how I got here about um, you know, the doubts I have and, and about where I'm going. So I'm, I'm happy to, thrilled in fact, to be here with all of you. And I really thank you for taking the time away from your exams to come here and, and interact today.